chances are you have never heard anyone tell their story publicly about being born intersex. You might not even really know what it means. Medically, it's called DSD or Disordered Sexual Development. Avery Haynes now with tonight's inside story shedding light on a rarely talked about condition. Almost 400,000 babies are born every year in Canada. So sweet. And every two days in this country, the delivery room question, is it a boy or is it a girl, simply cannot be answered. It is more common than people realize because people don't talk about conditions related to genitalia. The new term is intersex. You may know it as hermaphrodite. They've been labeled by doctors and other medical professionals as being abnormal. In a classroom at U of T, standing there by the chalkboard, Diane Lalonde is about to share what was once her deepest, darkest secret. <laughs> Diane's story begins the day she was born 58 years ago. I've tried to condense my story as best possible in regards to the trials and tribulations I grew up with all my life. Anyways, here it goes. And over the next hour at the Human Rights Conference at U of T, Diane tells a story few are willing to share. The term intersex means that you have genitalia of one and a lot of genitalia of the other. With me, it was more female than male. Until recently, many parents, including Diane's, were pressured to make an immediate decision about surgery. It's been an absolute horrific record. The medical committee was telling parents, what do you want? You want a son or you want a daughter? There are rare um, people with these conditions where there, a decision is made for the infant that the child should grow up as a boy or a girl, but as that child grows, that turns out not to have been the right decision. Sick Kids Hospital has had an intersex clinic for the past 14 years. Decisions are made more slowly than they were in the past with a lot of discussion with the family with very much the option of no surgery. Unlike many, Diane's parents refused immediate surgery and she lived her childhood with the genitalia of both genders. The only way I can keep it a secret is not to wear tight clothing, um, to wear dresses um, long enough that there was no slip ups. Did kids find out? Yes, they did find out. And what did they say to you? They called me a creep, a freak, a freak of nature. You're not even a boy, you're not even a girl. At the age of 15, after meetings with doctors and psychologists, Diane underwent surgery. When the doctors finally removed the bandages and everything else, I just basically broke down in tears. I was so happy that now my body is the way it should be. It made the final feeling as incomplete. I'm not a freak anymore. It makes a good smile. <laughs> From the shadows to activism, Diane is now pushing for an intersex support group and more acceptance in the rainbow of letters that don't often include her. Everywhere I go, I see posters, LGBT. I don't see the I. There's no area for the I or the intersex community. You did great. Thank you. I'm putting myself out there for everybody to see that it's a highly emotional problem. And now one of the members of the Intersex uh, Center at uh, Sick Kids mm -hmm. is working on setting up a program, a support group for adults like Diane, uh, and that would be expected to be up and running at Women's College in the next sort of six months. It's difficult to comprehend what they, what these people have gone through, like Diane. I mean, incredible experience for the young, the the younger people now. They're they're accepting it and they're trying to deal with it. But for those people, there was nothing for years for them. Not social services nor medical services, really. And the interesting thing about Diane too is she naturally gave birth to two children. She's a grandma of five, and it's people like her who didn't yeah. have access to the kind of care that kids now are getting. It seems she's made an incredible adjustment to everything with what she had to deal with. Yeah, she, she has. Over. She has. Right, I'd love to hear from you. You can reach out to me. I am on Twitter at City Avery. And the Inside Story runs every Tuesday and Thursday on City News. All segments are up on our website, citynews.ca.